My name is Randy Pitchford. I'm the president of Gearbox Software. I'm director of development also, directing Counter-Strike Condition Zero. Obviously the big deal is that it's now a complete game. There's a single player game as well as the uh, popular online action game. Uh, the single player game takes a lot of cues from what makes the multiplayer game fun, um, but we're happy to be able to introduce it to folks that maybe are not connected to the internet or people that don't have broadband capability that aren't necessarily having a, a fun experience on the internet. The other thing we're doing uh, in the single player and simulated multiplayer modes is to sort of bring people up to, with their skills, teach people how to play the game in a, in a safe and, and fun environment, kind of reward the new user a little bit more than what Counter-Strike currently does. Um, for fans of the original game, there's new technology, there's new content, um, new characters, new weapons, uh, new artificial intelligence. There's actually bots now that are part of the, part of the package, so there's a lot, a lot of reasons to, to get involved. The single player game is really exciting for us for two reasons. One, it's, the subject matter is really interesting, even more so than when we started the game. Um, and two, the, the game design is, is kind of new. It's, it's actually the most innovative first person shooter I've, I've worked with since I worked uh, with the Duke 3D stuff back when I was at 3D Realms. Uh, the innovation comes from a new paradigm. In trying to overcome the struggle of figuring out how to take what's fun about Counter-Strike and making a single player game out of it, um, we could have done you know, the easy route, which is the standard linear shooter, you know, just open up a, a room, uh, wake up the monsters there, kill them, and then proceed to the next room. That, that's kind of boring to us now. We've kind of expended that. So we've actually taken cues from other games, um, even in the console world, games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, where uh, there's lots of ways to approach an environment. In Counter-Strike Online, we become, ex we become extremely familiar with these environments, and they're, they're very solid, and they're designed to spend a lot of time in them. So in the single-player game, we wanted to provide lots of objectives and lots of interesting gameplay incentives um, so that people can approach the problem lots of different ways. So not only does, is the AI dynamic, so they approach the problem differently every time you play, but your objectives change every single time you play as well. The AI is really exciting for us. We started by looking at all of the commercial games out there that have uh, bot AI, and we also played a lot of uh, end-user bots, things that uh, level designers and uh, programmers on the internet have worked together to kind of create, um, and, and that collaboration has uh, provided the best success. In fact, one of the bots uh, was called the Podbot. A guy named Marcus, who lives in Germany, wrote it. And uh, we actually recruited him because we found that was the best bot available on the internet. So we, we connected him with our team, uh, our guys that are really good at uh, the traditional style AI. Um, you know, the guys that first introduced squad type AI in Opposing Force, where you had friendly characters actually fighting alongside of you. Um, and, and we also gave him access to the engine now, which is something we never had before. And with, with the availability of getting into the engine, with the exposure to professional programmers who have been doing this for a long time, and with this innovative new approach, we've been able to reach new ground with the artificial intelligence. And I think the biggest step that we've made, the biggest stride we've made, is in two directions. First, allowing the characters to actually communicate with each other. Instead of a lone entity following his own rules and his own schedules, they'll actually communicate with each other and work together. Um, if one guy is reloading, other guys will cover him if he asks for assistance and you know, that makes sense for that scenario. Um, the other key, uh, key thing that's improved the AI so much is giving them the ability to learn. If the player manages to find a way to exploit the AI, finds like a really sweet spot where he can snipe a guy every single time in the exact same place as they come around a corner, for example, the AI will start to learn this. Um, and they'll learn it very quickly, and they'll avoid that location. In fact, they'll, they'll approach the problem from new angles. Um, and it works vice versa if they have successes in certain areas. They'll, they'll remember that as well and, and adapt their strategy. In the gameplay itself, uh, some of the objectives that you'll do are narrative-based, things that we may already be familiar with, like rescuing the hostages or uh, defusing the bomb or assassinating this target. But some of the new objectives are, are really interesting. They're, they're more about the fun. Um, we found all kinds of different ways to challenge ourselves in playing the game, and we wanted to encourage that, and we've created objectives around that. So we'll do everything from um, defending a location where I'll, I'll get my squad together and hold this spot, and we actually adapt the AI so they'll now assault the spot in units and in squads. And, and that becomes a very uh, interesting, like, hold the Alamo situation. Um, other times it's, it's almost nonsensical, like run around the map and, and collect these five objects which are hidden in these locations. We try to apply context. Um, so it might be briefcases with secret documents or caches of money, uh, things like that. But for the most part, it's just for a gameplay mechanic. And some of them are, are, are really extreme. Um, don't really have a lot, lot of logic to them at all, just, just for the sake of the challenge. Um, for example, uh, complete this mission getting three kills with a knife. 
that's, that's a difficult task in a lot of cases. Or um, complete this mission without reloading your gun. So now I have to defeat my first enemy with the clip that I've got and uh, make sure that when I kill my first target that I take his gun and, and kill the next one. I'm not allowed to reload if I want to get, achieve that bonus. It's kind of an interesting challenge. So we're able to uh, encourage the player to think about playing the game in different ways, develop different skills, and use the full gamut of, of equipment and weapons that are available to them in the game, rather than just becoming comfortable and familiar with just one weapon that they use over and over again. As the squad leader, you're dealing with hot spots around the world. Um, these include South America, where there's drug lords, and even the United States, where you deal with these militia experiments. Of course, you'll go to the Middle East, um, Arctic Russia, uh, urban Europe, and even the Far East in, in Asian territories. And that's really exciting because it's kind of new environments for us. We've actually added quite a few new weapons to the game, added quite a lot of content, not just weapons. But the weapons are really exciting because a lot of the weapons we chose to add, add new, uh, new strategies and new tactical solutions to old uh, problems um, in the game. Not, not laws, but just tactical problems. Um, for example, there's now a, a ballistic shield, which is a defensive device. I can actually absorb or repel um, all manner of small arms fire. So uh, working in teams, I can have a sniper working together with a guy with a ballistic shield, and we can now have new lines of fire that weren't available to us, even in the classic Counter-Strike maps. And this presents really interesting new tactical situations. There's also new weapons uh, like the Law Rocket, which uh, this is, I mean, this is a, this is a anti-tank weapon that's used as an anti-personnel device. It's really an interesting application for it. Um, some of the other weapons are great, like the M60 uh, is very different from the existing uh, the saw, the para, because it, uh, it allows you to really lay down suppressing fire. Obviously it's wildly inaccurate if I try to run around with it Rambo style, but if I, if I hunker down and I really go cyclic with that thing, it starts to become really accurate, accurate and I can lay down suppressing fire. We've also added detail uh, to the characters, uh, to, to all the objects actually, so that you'll see in the characters there's an improvement of at least 75% in the polygonal detail and texture detail of these characters. But we've done it without sacrificing frame rate because we've also added a level of detail system. So if you're comfortable running the game, uh, running Counter-Strike with your machine now, you'll run Condition Zero just fine, but it may look better for you if you've got nicer hardware, which is a nice thing to add. Actually, one of the exciting things that's happened at GDC is uh, Valve's announced Steam technology and uh, basically allows them to deploy content at will. Um, content could include updates to, uh, to, the, uh, to the code. Um, and part of, part of this, this effort that they've, uh, they've endeavored to complete is to defeat cheating once and for all. Um, obviously, you can't defeat it once and for all, so it's an ongoing process, and they've developed technology to do that. Uh, the Valve guys will actually be discussing this technology in more detail. Uh, moving forward, but I, I think they're really excited to finally deploy something that they've been working on for actually about a year now uh, to, to get rid of this problem on the internet.